Hi, Connor Sullivan. This is Brett Beard Show. How you doing, Coach Beard? I'm great, Connor. How about yourself? I'm doing good. You know, I had a Halloween this past weekend. Yep. Yeah. Sir, how was your Halloween? It was a good Halloween. You was know? it? Yeah. So, it's actually I'm gonna post it up on the screen. Let's uh, take a look at your costume. You know, you got the you know denim springs. Yeah. Ex explain that to us. Walk us through that. Well, I mean, real proud to be uh, to be at denim and. Thought it was a nice gesture by my wife to want to to dress in some Denim Springs gear and got to put on the pads again, and tape the old hands up again, just like the old days. Yes, sir. Looks like we could use her on the D line, huh? I would dominate. Yeah. All right, look good, Coach. All right, let's get into the highlights. So you got Denim Springs taking the field in the all white. You know, Coach, how do you how do you feel that we earn the white helmets? Yeah, anything you get that you earn is it just means more, and we look good and we played better because of it. Yes, sir. It's a uh, quite a crazy game. So. Jackets take the field. You got Hayden rushing, blowing up number 22. She, CJ McClendon. That'd be on fourth down for a turnover on downs with Walker. All right, so Denim would be forced to punt. Second quarter, Walker quarterback Warren Young. Deep pass to Ja'Cory Thomas, which would actually be incomplete, but would be called for a pass interference. A couple plays later, Walker McClendon again punches it in for the 7 0 lead. You know, explain that. You get the pass interference, they come back down, score. So, how does, how does that tie in together? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, they capitalized on a uh, on a penalty and uh, finished the drive, which was which was critical in these type of games, especially a rivalry game, and they did what they were supposed to do. Yes, sir. No, we had a little bit of offensive struggles in the first half. Jackets would uh, you got Walker Celebrating. Jackets would be on offense now. Ray McNeely handoff to Cam Kelly, but he would end up being stuffed in the backfield. Jackets would end up punting. Walker's ball now. Young on the keeper. Make some moves, make Alex Chandler miss, and he would uh, run downfield for a nice game. And you'd have Mason Vries in on the tackle. Big gain in the Denim territory. Direct snap to Ja'Cory Thomas, who would end up running it in the end zone for a touchdown. 14-0 Walker. You know, uh, you, come in, you come out, take a offense struggling. They take the 14-0 lead. Just how, what's the, what's the like on the sidelines, John? Well, I mean, we were flat. We started out flat. I, think we, I, I didn't think we tackled very well at all Friday night. And uh, well, they got two special kids in six and thirteen. And they made us pay. Yes, sir. And uh, our offense just—you know—we we've had our ups and downs, but it seemed like this first half we just couldn't get it. Handoff to Cam Kelly, but he would actually be tackled for a loss by number 18, Deonre Levy. So it's a uh, halftime now, 14 on Walker. So it's third quarter. McNeely handoff to Cam Kelly, who runs for a nice gain to start off the second quarter. You know, it's a uh, good to see. You know, with the first half struggles, which. Uh, Denham going for it on fourth down now, but it would be a pitch to Michael Harrison. It would be stuffed. That'd be a turnover on downs. You know, you come out the half, swinging, drive downfield, and you get a turnover on downs. It just, you know, kills the momentum. So you got Jackets ball again. McNeely hand off to Cam Kelly with another nice run. Cuts outside. He would eventually be tackled by number seven. That'd be a face mask penalty to put him a little further downfield. Uh, a couple plays later, touchdown run by Cam Kelly, you know, with the balance, the cut, that's a great play right there. You know, explain how you come out 14 nothing, often struggling, and you come out the second half swinging, and you finally score, cut the lead to 14-7, how, how is that? Yeah, and really at this point, we already screwed up a fourth and short, but uh, Cam really took over the second half, and uh, you can see this by finishing runs. A couple of other runs is making people miss, breaking tackles. Uh, it's kind of a coming out party for Cam. I mean, he, he took the full workload and got it done. As you see, uh, with uh, obviously the injury of Reese Mooney, you had to put Ray at quarterback. And I mean, Cam Kelly had to be at running back, and I feel like he's done a great job, you know, all yep. season just taking on that role as the starting running back. No doubt. So, so Walker's ball now, quarterback Warren Young with a Reed keeper, makes a move, following his blockers. You got Cameron Irick chasing him down, but it would not be enough. They would score. Score is now 20 to 7. They would end up missing the extra point. That's a, uh, you know, you come out. Down 14 nothing. Offense struggles. They finally score. Cut the lead to 14-7. They come out, you know, with the long run for the touchdown. Yeah, I mean that's just a, that was a great call. You know, defensively we, we didn't do our we didn't go through our keys and our reads. And uh, when you do that, you leave a you leave a seam and then they they hit it perfectly and take it to the house. So their uh, play calling seemed pretty good last night too. So, uh, so next drive, Jackets would be forced to punt. You got Caleb Mitchell in on the punt. You'd have Ja'Cory Thomas returning, but he would actually muff the punt, and that would be recovered by Eli DiGirolamo. You know, the ball finally bouncing our way again, yep. and that's a that's a huge that's huge right there because you're down two scores coming into the third quarter, and you get the turnover. Just like how big is that for the momentum of this game? Yeah, you know, 
you keep paying your dudes like we're doing, doing things the right way, the ball's going to eventually turn and start bouncing our way, and it has. I mean, you got to make plays at those times. I mean, I'm sure they're not real happy with the fact that they didn't make a play, uh, and we did. And uh, it was critical. And so, so it's fourth quarter now. McNeely would punch it in for the uh, in the end zone. Touchdown. It's now 20 to 14. So coming in the fourth quarter, it was 20 to 7. You come out, he must the punt. We get capitalized on it. Score 20 to 14. So uh, Walker's ball now. Stern short. Walker is a uh, Warren Young keeps it, but he's stuffed in the backfield by Ethan Foster, forcing the Wildcats to punt. So now it's a uh, denim on offense again. You got McNeely with the quarterback keeper. You know, he hits the sideline, making the defenders miss, and he just he's running deep downfield. And he would eventually be tackled around the 10-yard line. That That's huge right there. And then that would actually, he would capitalize. Got him celebrating. Raymond Neal would actually capitalize next play with uh, scoring in the red zone. So now Denham now takes the lead 21-20. to 20. So, you know, you're down 14 nothing, you score, they score back. It's 20-7 to 7 going into the fourth quarter. You know, I wouldn't say we had our heads down, but, you know, it looks like no, we just needed a little spark, and uh, that's what we were waiting on, you know. Finally, somebody made the spark, and yes, they us up. That's the, that's the momentum. Really, all, all it was the momentum. And uh, the finishing drives, that was critical for us right there. You know, you saw us start to finish drives here at the end, which was a big difference from early on. Yes, sir, and it's, our offense is, uh, you know, starting to click. They, I, don't th I think they had no first downs in the first half, actually, and they come out swinging in the second half. So, you got Walker back on uh, offense. Now, Warren Young with the keeper again. Going deep downfield for another big gain. You know, he had he had quite a night. So uh, next play would be Warren Young back to pass to uh, Ja'Cory Thomas, which would actually be caught by a touchdown with the pass interference, which would give Walker the lead again, 26-21. So you're going back and forth. Yeah. You know, you come back, make a, you get the lead. They come back, score again. Explain how the team was fighting. How. Well, I mean, I, look, I think Walker's a pretty good football team. You know, they just haven't finished games and, you know, do some things they probably won't back on film and they're going to go back to work. But I think it's two pretty good football teams getting after each other right here. Yeah, so they definitely had some uh, good players. So now it's the two-point conversion. Warren Young with the uh, pass to Jarvis Patterson is good. So they make up for the missed extra, missed extra point, 28-21 walking out with just a few minutes left. So you got freshman quarterback Jerry Horn with a dot to Micah Harrison who runs after the catch for a big gain, getting into the red zone. Now, next play would be Jerry Horn again. Screen pass to McNeely. You know, uh, juking defenders, making defenders miss. Getting deeper into the red zone, closer to the end zone. So now it's a, a second and goal. Jerry Horn throws up a fade ball to Cameron Irick. Would, uh, would, uh, that would be the tie of the game, but it would be broken up. So it's 28-28 with just a minute to play left. Oh, uh, you got Jerry Horn with the dot to Cameron Irick in the end zone to tie the game 28 to 28. Just that's huge right there. You put the freshman quarterback in in the two minute drill, drops 70 yards downfield, and ties the game. Just how big is that? Yeah, I mean, anytime a freshman comes in and does what he does, you know, he struggles in JV games. I mean, that's that's realistically why we haven't gone to him because he's had such bad struggles in JV and. He got called upon to get this job done and through two minute drills during the week and everything else. I mean, he, he did a heck of a job and, and really grew up. Yeah, so that's just something you love to see, you know, the young guys making plays, especially in. So Wildcats would be forced to punt. You got Jerry Horn kneeling it to force overtime. Denham wins the toss, gets the ball first. First play of the game, you got Jerry handing off to Ray McNeely, stiff arm in the defender, and he scores on the first play of overtime. So it's now 35 28 to Jackets. You know, explain how Ray, how big of a deal like he was in this game. Well, he's just more comfortable, uh, you know, as a running back. The path, uh, everything, you don't have to all the pre snap thoughts that has to go through his head, and he's just more comfortable playing running back because that's what he is, and, and you can see that in his play. You know, the biggest thing is people wonder why I wanted the ball first. You know, defense has been on the field a lot all night. We had some momentum. I wanted to go ahead and score first and put the pressure back on them and uh, give our defense a chance to do what they did. Yes, sir. And if, the, if there's one one guy you want to trust in overtime is Ray McNeely right there, number five. That's it. Yeah, he's a freak. I love I love watching him play. I love that he's on my team and just an awesome teammate, awesome kid, awesome football player. That's the one player. guy I think really everyone fun. on the team trusts the most with the ball in his hey, hand. No doubt. So, so it, uh, Walker would end up getting the ball. They would run two plays and be stopped. So it's third goal now. You uh, hand off to 21, Rayshon Simmons, he's stuck. So it's now fourth and goal. This is the game right here. So Walker direction after Ja'Cory Thomas, and he is stuffed on the line. Denham would end up winning in overtime, 35-20. You know, that's just a huge game right there. You know, you got the offense going first play. Defense comes out, holds it, and we get the win. Like, that's just, 
That's crazy. I, I want to tell you right now, that is the best feeling I've had in a while, especially just running onto that field. Because I remember last year after the Live Oak game, you know, seeing them storm the field and celebrating. That was like, I, it just, it felt good to be on the other end of it, you know. Definitely a very proud moment. I mean, uh, just to see us grow up, to see us go through what we've been through, to stick with the process, keep trusting me and the coaches, and uh, to come down to this right here. You know, I, I, I just want so badly for y'all to experience the victory, the joys of victory, you everything you put right into there. it, there it is, and that's what I want you to have. So you got the alma mater, like, that, it's just, I know we haven't had a lot of successes in the past years, but this year, you know, we, we won, and we won quite a few games, and just like, seeing that alma mater is so much fun, especially yep. after a win, you know, we all do it after a loss, and it feels like a shame, like walking up to the student section is a shame, but like now it's just, Joy, straight joy, and I, I love you, man. I, love I think you. I think we're changing the, the school. I think we're changing the community. I think people are starting to believe in us again and what we're doing, and you can see the energy and excitement. Yes, sir. Let's get into the stats. So you have Cam Kelly, 19 rushes, 126 yards with one touchdown. Ray McNeely, one for one passing, 14 rushes with 70 yards and three touchdowns. With Jerry Horn, three for six passing, 74 yards and one touchdown. So let's talk about overcoming adversity. Yep. You're down 14 none at halftime. You know, you score once, they score back 20-7 to seven going into the fourth quarter, and you eventually get in the win in overtime. Just how big is that, you know? Well, I mean, a rivalry game. I mean, there's a rivalry game between two good football teams. You know, the, there's going to be some haymakers thrown. There's going to be some shots taken. And uh, to stay the course and keep trusting the process and doing what we did, I mean, that's it. You get hit, you got to hit back. And uh, I thought y'all did a phenomenal job with that. You know, Friday night, I, I really did. I couldn't be more proud of the way you, the way you handled everything. And uh, when you talk about adversity, what more do, what more do we have to go through as a football program to prove we can handle adversity? You know, coming off that, what does this mean when for this program? Like, how do you think going into overtime? You know, it gives us that kind of experience. You know, being down, coming back, bringing it to overtime. Like, how do you think this is going to help us going forward? Well, I mean, there's a lot of growth. I mean, uh, how often have we had our back against the wall and didn't succeed? How often have we gotten down and folded? You know, the, the mentality and the mindset of Denham Springs football is, is turning uh, and turning for the better. And, you know, to go out and finish a football game on the road, you know, big thing on the road. Like, I don't think Denham Springs has won a lot of uh, away games. Yeah, we're going to talk about 18. that. We're going to talk about that in a minute. You know, there's, there's just a lot of things here that uh, – that really had to be done. That had to be done for us to kind of take that next leap in the process of this program. All right, so let's talk about the offense. The first half, the offense just could not move the ball at all. You had yep. no first downs in the first half, and you come out, you score 28 points in the second half and score on the first play in overtime to eventually get in the 35-28 win. Who are some major contributors in that, and what does it show about the growth of this offense? Well, I mean, first off, I'd love to uh, start fast. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't want to wait a half a football and eat the clock. Have and, to dig out a hole. Have to dig out a hole. I mean, I'd like to start fast. I mean, you know, the critical guys here, you know, O-line started slow but got a lot better there at the end. Finally started doing some things that I know they're capable of doing. Uh, you know, taking Ray from quarterback to running back with, with Horn in there at the end, you, you saw some good runs there. You saw the, you know, you know, out of the backfield, the pass get completed. You know, Ray's just a, he's, he's a heck of a running back. That's what he's most comfortable doing. But uh, he's just our guy, so we got to trust that he does everything we need him to do. And you know, when he plays quarterback, he's our quarterback. When he plays running back, he's our running back. And you know, Cam Kelly coming in now and being a full-time running back, which is you know, he's been splitting time a lot his whole time here at Denham. I mean, the dude is a big-time starting running back as well. Uh, you know, Micah Harrison with his touches makes the most of them. Uh, I really just love the growth of our offense. You, you know, five weeks ago, people are sitting here going, "Man, you lost your starting quarterback." It's over, mm -hmm. and we knew that wasn't the case. We just had to, you know, you just got to give us some time to put it together to get it going back in the direction we had it going. And you can see now with Jerry growing up, uh, with Ray getting more comfortable every week, you know, our O line getting better. You know, there's some things we can do, and we're only going to get better. Yeah, you're talking about the O line. I was like, I went and uh, we had the Saturday practice. I was talking to him. I was like, what happened at halftime? Like, what did your coaches tell you? And he was like, nothing. Like, we, we just kept everything the same. And I was like, then why couldn't we move the ball? He was like, because we were literally just one block away. Like, yeah. one block away every We're making too time. many mistakes. I mean, that, that's ultimately what it is. I mean, when you look at it, you know, when, you know, I'm listening on the headset too. You know, we've always got one or two guys not doing their job, making a mistake. And uh, you don't realize how critical it is. Mm -hmm. Especially you're that. behind the chains nonstop because we don't want to do what we're taught to do. Yes, sir. And I'm, pr I'm really proud of the offense stepping up. You know, they helped that game a lot. So let's uh, actually get into that. So you're down 21 to 28 with about a minute 50 left in the game. Put Jerry Horn, the freshman in that quarterback, and he drives 70 yards downfield, scores to tie the game and bring us into overtime. What does the future have to offer, not just Jerry, but this offense going forward with, like, 
Is there a little bit more trust with him at quarterback? Well, yeah, or? You know, because you know, a lot of people don't come out and watch JV games other than, you know, a lot of parents and stuff. But, I mean, realistically, he has struggled in JV games. And when you're turning the football over you know, two to four times in a JV game, it's hard for me to say that's our guy as a freshman that we can turn our offense over to. Uh, but he comes in Friday night, Friday night and really grows up and does some things that, that wows you. No, but he is just a freshman. And there's still a lot of growth to uh, to be had, but uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna get him mixed in a little more and get him more comfortable. Let's talk about the defense. So they stop Walker in overtime. You know, so a lot of people, if under uh, overtime, it's where they get the ball on the ten and they have four yards to score. And you know, we score on the first play and we stop them in the four downs. But uh, you know, explain how big. I wouldn't say we had defensive struggles the whole game, but it was like, you know, they played. Let's talk about the defensive no, part. I thought they played well. I mean, they, they as poorly as we played offensively the first half, I mean, we did hold them to 14 defensively, which is a two-score ball game, which is a really good spot to be with plenty of time coming out of half with uh, playing such a poor game. You know, you're going to give up big plays. I mean, that's every play is designed to score. And uh, with all these RPOs and options, I mean, sometimes you catch a kid, you know, with a with a, a read that he thought was right that that wasn't right, or he's not he's a a yard off where he's supposed to be. So a guy, you know, guys of these kind of athletes can break it. Especially with uh, Coach Maffey's offense, you know, it's a yeah. it's always like having a it's real tricky. Yeah, it's he real does a good job, and you know, he he does he does a good job and puts you in some tough spots. But yeah, I thought defensively answered up. I mean, they really have been playing really well the last few weeks. Yes, sir, I agree. So let's talk about uh, ending the road drought since 2018. This is the first road game we've won since 2018. It's the yeah. first time that we've swept the parish since 2014. Is, are you, are you, uh, you know, telling your guys about that, or is it like, how does that? Congratulations on being an <laughs> LP champion. Um, I, you know, there are little victories to be had in this process, and there's no doubt, you know, things that we haven't been able to accomplish here matter. Uh, the fact that we haven't beat Walker and Live Oak in the same year since 14 says we're, we're moving in the right direction. That, you know, those are big rivalry games, big time programs. You know, they're not always, uh, all three of us don't always have the best records, but those are some of the best games. Like, if you're a high school football fan, these are the games you want to come out and watch because there is a lot of intensity. Uh, a lot of a lot of rivalry uh, intensity uh, with these with, the, with these three communities. They're big wins when you get them, and uh, there's no doubt, you know, that it, it is a big deal. And I don't realize how big a deal it is until I hear y'all talk about it. Coach Coates has been in the parish for ten years and said this is the first time he's ever won the Livingston Parish title or mm -hmm. or beat both schools in the same year. You know, so it is a big deal, and it is something that's kind of in the back of your mind because realistically, if you can't win your parish, how do you expect to win the state championship? Mm -hmm. You know, so it is a big deal, and, uh, you know, hats off to that. As far as the road games, I mean, we got to get comfortable taking a bus ride. I mean, if we got to start taking bus rides around the stadium before we go practice just to get used to getting on a bus and off a bus to go play, you know, we can do so. Uh, but, you know, ultimately, if you want to win a state championship, it's not one at home anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, so we have to be comfortable playing on the road. And, uh, you know, for all the viewers, our, our kids definitely need to work on how to celebrate on the bus, on their bus ride home <laughs> after getting a win. Because you can tell it's been a while. <laughs> because, uh, boy, it was, it was bad. Uh, we're sitting in the back of the bus. We're like, Coach Beard, like. It's like Ricky <laughs> Bobby with his hands doing an interview. Like, they don't know what to do. Like, it's embarrassing. Like, guys, you know, y'all can sing, dance. We didn't know. We were, like, we were like, are we allowed to sing? You had people telling other people to be quiet on the bus. And it was just like, yeah, well, we were on the bus. And it was like, we just didn't know what to do. We are like, Coach Beard, like, can, can we scream? Can we, yeah. we have people telling other people, you know, like, be quiet? Like, don't talk. And then Coach Beard's like, y'all better have fun. And uh, it was uh, quite a ride home. Yeah. And so, so let's got talk. a lot to learn. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, how do you feel for the guys after a win like this? Well, I'm just so proud of you, you know, for you, for you to play and fight like you did and to finish and, com and, and, com and com complete a game. I mean, I, I, yeah, I couldn't be more proud of you guys. I, I really want this more for you all than I do anything else. Like, I like winning. I hate losing. But I love watching you all win. You know, I love watching you guys get to experience everything you pour into a football season and the grind and – uh, you know what it takes to prepare to, to play a football game. Anytime you get a victory, I'm more proud for you that you get to experience that. Yes, yeah, sir. I'm, it's definitely a, a fun feeling right there. So let's talk about the playoffs. You know, uh, how's the playoffs looking for us? I mean, we're in. There's still a lot of things to be worked out, but uh, you know, we, everybody has an opportunity at 0 and 0 when you go into the dance, and that's what we have to do. All right. So uh, that's all the football questions got for you today. But let's talk about uh, you know getting to know you a little bit more. 
So it's a, it's called, I'm gonna call it get to know Coach Beer. So what was your favorite experience in high school, college, or NFL career? Well, I mean, high school, we won state championship my senior year in football, went 15-0 and in, in 6A in Alabama, which is a big deal. Uh, you know, baseball, we were national champions my junior year, baseball American national champions in 98, but also won it every year in baseball and uh, getting to play for Sammy Dunn, arguably the best high school baseball coach ever in Alabama, getting to play for uh, Buddy Anderson, arguably the, well, the all-time winningest coach in Alabama. Um, you know, got to go to Vandy, which was actually a long time dream of my dad to go to was to go to Vandy. Uh, both of my parents are from Nashville, so I got to, you know, kind of let him vicariously live through me, so I can remember the day that I got that offer and how excited he was, and that's what I wanted for him because he he worked his butt off to provide for mom and all my sisters, and um, you know, got to play in the hula bowl in Hawaii at, from college, which was a you know, an amazing experience for a week. And you could have told me football was over after that, and I thought I'd hit the peak. And then, you know, just being able to sign with Indianapolis was uh, a huge feat. I mean, really, this whole thing started because I wanted to give back to my mom and dad, and they'd worked so hard to take care of us and provide for us that I wanted to be able to go to college for free. Yes, sir. So uh, let's talk about why do you coach? Like, what made you get into coaching? Well, I mean, the game of football brings so many things together. Like, it's amazing the people you meet, the relationships, the traveling you get to do, the places you get to go, uh, you know, what you learn, you know, as a young man coming up through this game because it is the closest thing to life you're going to experience. Uh, I fell in love with it when I was a seventh grader, and I've never looked back and always knew this is what I wanted to do and uh, give back to the game of football and give back to the, the coaches that have uh, impacted myself and have helped me grow and uh, I've just always wanted to give back to the game, and, and I just love it so much, and you know, it's going to keep me young forever. Yes, sir. That's, a, that's a, some little bit more simple. What's like your favorite food, favorite restaurants to go eat and eat at and stuff? So I get to give them some publicity right here. You know, I like uh, I like La Coretta. I like Big Mike's. Um, some I like local the, restaurants. I like the pub. Their their burger is amazing. It's to Kevin. Um, you know, I mean, I I. I out in Denham all the time. I love Asahi. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I really have a wide array of food. I mean, look at me. I'm a pretty big old boy. I don't. <laughs> I don't really mind food. Uh, you know, I, I don't ever. I don't really ever say no to pizza. And it really, I've never met a bad pizza. Or, you know, I'm not from here, so jambalaya. I like it all. I've never met a bad jambalaya, even though people tell me some of it's worse than others. I, <laughs> I've never had a bad one, so I like that all. So, yeah. All right. Now we got the speed answer question. So, who takes the most chew ins from you? What player has surprised you the most this year and the funniest moment at practice from this year, just your favorite memory overall? Uh, it takes the most butt chewings. Well, Russian got his chewed pretty good Friday night because of, <laughs> of his penalties. Uh, <laughs> Which one? Hayden, you know, he got it chewed pretty good. Seems like of both penalties. of them that practice get, uh, they, yeah. they get into it a lot. It's they do, <laughs> they do. Uh, I don't always mind, you know, butt chewing's good. You know, mm. I mean, I, I used to get my butt chewed. <laughs> it's part of it. It's part of growing up. It's uh, it's out of love. I mean, it's out of, it's really out of love to make sure you learn from it. Um, the the biggest surprise. Oh, let's go. To, let's stay the same route. I mean, fourteen and eight at outside linebacker. Ethan mm. Foster and Hayden Russian have probably been our biggest surprises on the football team defensively. I mean, that we were so poor on the edge last year and gave up so much, and it had a lot to do with kind of our safety outside linebacker mm -hmm. play. but You saw him on the first play at Walker blowing it up on that fourth down play. Yeah, I mean, those two are, those two are really, they've really grown up. And then what, what was the third question? The funniest moment at practice this year, just your oh. favorite memory overall. You know, I, I really love every day. I mean, I, I, I don't, there's not a moment that goes by. I mean, once again, I mean, you can kind of stay on the Hayden Hunter rushing <laughs> uh, theme here. The fact that the two brothers get in fights at practice <laughs> crack me up. I think it's hilarious, and because I'm always asking, you know, what do y'all do when you get home? Like, do y'all y'all get this straight at the kitchen? Do y'all have milk and cookies together? Like, what do you, what do you do to, to how does this work? Like, so I, I do find that pretty funny. Uh, but really, I, look, I, I love every day, man. I, I I love the energy we've brought every day to practice. I mean, there's no. That's one thing I felt like we've done a good job is like not making practice so miserable. You know, like yeah. yes, we're getting work in and we're ha but we're having fun while doing it. And that's yeah. one thing. It's like I love I love watching y'all practice in the rain because y'all get so excited <laughs> and it's, it's mind blowing to me that you just love playing in the rain. So. Uh, you know, that's always fun when we have those days. And All right, so for this uh, last little segment, we uh, posted on Instagram questions that fans want to ask you. So we have big underscore juice underscore Zach asks, what were your high school weight room maxes? Ooh. 
they weren't real huge. You got to remember, man, strength and conditioning has come a long way. You know, I, I don't consider myself old by any means, but uh, you know, 20 years now, I'm 40, so 20 years ago, you know, that was probably a, a 400, 400 squat, a 300 bench. That's still pretty impressive, Coach. Yeah, I mean, uh, but they got a lot bigger in college. Mm -hmm. But I mean, uh, you know, strength and conditioning has come such a such a long way. All right, so you got Phoebe the GB asks, "Was your dream job being a football coach?" Yes. Yeah, you know, believe it or not, uh, I've coached college a couple of years, and I always wanted to be a high school football coach, always. And I'm not from here. And when I pulled into this state, I thought I was gone in three months. I didn't think I, I was coming here and was going to be here for three months and then go back to Birmingham or Nashville. Fell in love with the people here, and I fell in love with the culture here. And, uh, and you know, and I, yeah, just really just I fell in love with it and made the decision I wanted to get into high school football in this state and get to be a head coach at one of the biggest high schools in this state. You know, at that time, that wasn't necessarily Denham Springs was my dream job, but uh, – you know, the way it all shook out and worked out, this is, uh, I'm living my dream every day because I wanted to be a head football coach at one of the biggest schools in the state of Louisiana where I, I came and knew nobody and have kind of just, you know, along the way, the relationships, the coaches I've got, the friends I've met, it's just been, a, it's been an unbelievable ride and I, I literally live my dream every day. That's why I come into work early, I leave work late, like, I love being here. Sir, so that's, uh, that's awesome to hear. We got one more, so Connor.Thurman5 asks, who let Walker and Live Oak believe they could beat us? Uh, that's probably a lot of my <laughs> doing from when I went to Live Oak. I mean, I, you know, we kind of created a monster with this parish. <laughs> uh, you know, I think when Live Oak beat Denham, that was kind of a big, like, wow, this can be done. Because uh, I don't think it had really been done in this parish a whole lot. And when Live Oak did it, I think there was a belief system that went into Live Oak. I think Walker began to believe. Uh, but it's like I've always said, I never, I never once thought Denham Springs ever came down to Live Oak and Walker. Live Oak and Walker elevated. I mean, that, you can see what they've they built. You can see their growth in their communities. Uh, the, you know, they, they do a great job. And, and Denham didn't come down. Those schools came up and came up at a, at, you know, faster than Denham did. And uh, because of it, you know, Denham got caught and surpassed there for a few years. And, you know, hopefully we can get this put back in order. All right, so this, uh, this Friday is going to be the final game at Yellow Jacket Stadium. Just what does the stadium mean to the community, and what does the future hold? Well, I mean, ideally I'd like to have another game there, the second round of the playoffs. That's also, yeah, so if we uh, – for there's a lot of confusion out there. So this Friday is not the final home game if we have a – like they're not in, they're not starting the construction after well, this Friday. Yeah, no, it's set up now to where we're going to get through the season. Okay. So yeah. we 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 could host a playoff game here, uh, that, but you know, realistically, this could be the last home game at Yellow Jacket Stadium. But yeah, it's like I've told people the last couple of weeks. I mean, it, you know, change is good, and what never changes with all of this was the blood, sweat, and tears that went into building Denham Springs football on that field before it was turf, uh, after it was turf. Uh, no matter how it gets moved, how it gets shifted, the uh, the people that have come before us that put this foundation in play, that never changes. The DS never changes. The purple and gold never changes. And, uh, you know, the history on that field, the traditions on that field, uh, the men that have graced those sidelines before me, uh, I've got a lot of love and respect for. And uh, hopefully you do as players, with all the players that have come before you. And uh, you just got to continue to grow it and continue to make those people proud by, you know, building on top of a foundation that they've left. Yes, sir. So that's all I got for you today. Thank you for coming on, Coach. Absolutely.